Hello everyone, Yudi here. On behalf of the entire AUC Talks channel, I would like to apologize to you guys for the smoke detector situation we're having. We've read all of your comments and we love taking on board all of your constructive criticism, but unfortunately the solution hasn't been found yet, but soon we'll have it. I promise we will have it fixed for you guys. But on the meantime, we have pre-recorded some great videos that unfortunately have a bit of the sound coming off. So I'd just like to put this, uh, the statement right here to apologize in regards to that, but I hope it doesn't take too much away from your enjoyment. And thank you so much for subscribing to our channel, liking and commenting. We appreciate that so much and hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Thank you very much. We are very proud to announce UMP Trading is an official partner with a proven profit track record. Yeah, if you want great returns on your investments, be sure to check out UMP Trading. Hello everyone and welcome back to the AUC channel. Uh, today we're going to be doing a bit of a fun topic for you guys. We're going to be making our CONCACAF 11s, but there's a little bit of a twist. We're only allowed to use one player per country. So we have to think a little bit outside of the box with these uh, picks, carefully picking players in the right positions. and. Yeah, let's just get right into it and let's start with the formations. Uh, I'm going to be playing a 4-3-3 flat. Uh, Arjun, what's your formation? 4-3-3 flat. All right, Jeff? Uh, same as both of you guys, 4-3-3 flat. Pretty basic. Shrey, what's your, for Shrey, what's your formation? Yep, exact same, to be honest, it's the easiest. All right, yeah, that's fair enough. Uh, so let's get into the goalkeeper. And I think this might be the same as all of you guys, but I'm going to go for Costa Rica's Kaylor Navas. I think considering the options at goalkeeper uh, and the options that Costa Rica have at all the other positions, I think Navas is a pretty clear choice. I mean, obviously he's world class, probably the best goalkeeper in CONCACAF history, if we're going to be honest. I mean, he's a legend of Real Madrid, PSG, won several Champions Leagues. And yeah, Arjun, who's your keeper? Same as you, Kaylor Navas. All right, Jeff, who you got in goal? Uh, yeah, um, um, I'm going with uh, Central American representation like you guys, a Central American legend, Keller Navas. You know, um, his, his legacy pretty much speaks for itself. World-class goalkeeper. Uh, never forget that the breakout World Cup he had really helped benefit and launch his career. Yep, Shay, you going with the same? Yeah, it has to be Keller Navas. Hopefully he goes back to Real Madrid after Courtois' injury. That'd be amazing to see. Yeah, that's a good shout, honestly. Real Madrid do need a, a new keeper, and I think he'd do pretty well for them. Uh, so now, getting into the right back, I'm going to go for another Central American, Alex Roldan from El Salvador. Again, just looking at all the other options from El Salvador, and considering right back isn't exactly the most marquee of positions, I think it just made sense to have him slot in here. He's a pretty good player. I think definitely El Salvador's best. Obviously, brother of U.S. international Christian. And yeah, a pretty good player for the Sounders as well in MLS. So, Arjun, who are you going with? Yeah, so guys, I promise the rest of the, the rest of the squad won't be the same for everyone, but I've got the same player, Alex Rodon. So yeah, move on to Jeff, I guess. Um, um, I'm actually going a bit different here. Um, I'm going with Guatemala's um, Aaron Herrera, a right back, a former U.S. international. Never really played for us, but he was a U.S. international. Um, he had a pretty good um, goal cup uh, along with uh, uh, Rubin from Real Salt Lake. Uh, and he just shows that he's a he's a very quality right back, you know, has a lot of pace. And yeah, he's my right back. Uh, yeah, that's a good pick. Shrey, who are you going with? Yeah, I also went, agreed with Prade and Arch, and I also went with Alex Roldan, captain of El Salvador. He's a pretty decent player, and he's the better Roldan. All right, I said it here. Better Roldan. Max. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with that as well. All right, into our uh, two center back slots. I'm going to go for Ethan Pennick from Jamaica. I think considering that CONCACAF has a lot of weaknesses in the defensive area, I think a lot of the good players are attackers. So it's kind of hard to get a defender in here. And it's the same thing for Jamaica. I mean, their best players are all attackers, but considering that, that Ethan Pennick is a, a solid starter for Brentford in the Premier League, I think he has to be here. And for my other one, this one might be considered cheating a little bit. He's usually a CDM but I'm going to go for Edson Alvarez. Uh, he has played center back in the past. He played there for Mexico in all three of their group stage games in the Gold Cup this summer. So I think he's a fair pick to put there. And 
like I said, the depth at, at center back is very, very bad, to be honest, in CONCACAF. So I think he's probably a better option than the rest, anyone else I could put here. And he's also Mexico's best player. So I think I had to fit him in here. Arjun, who are your two center backs? Yeah, so my two center backs are pretty shocking, but um, my it's actually a right back from Haiti um, out position, Carlens Arcus, the right back for Vitesse in Netherlands. Um, he's a he's a solid right back. He's been playing um, professionally in Europe his whole career. He's playing he's played for Vitesse for many seasons now. And last season he had actually no, I might have only been one season in Vitesse. But last season he had one goal and three assists in um, the Eredivisie. Solid return from the right back. Um, I'm just I'm putting him at center back because he's not the, he's five foot eleven, but I think he, he he's right at that threshold of just tall enough to be a center back. And again, like Braden said, center back um, depth in Concacaf is very bad. So Carlin's Arcus, a uh, Haitian right back, to me on my center back. And for the other one? Oh, we're doing two. Okay. Um. Yeah, I got my Guatemalan boy. Nicolas Samayoa, okay, the Gold Cup, um, pretty, 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 pretty well performed at the Gold Cup. He did really well, in my opinion. Uh, in the in the loss against Jamaica, he was one of the, um, Guatemala's best players. Um, Samayoa from um, Guatemala. But I think he might be a brother of this other guy called uh, Jose Pinto Samayoa, who also played in that game against Jamaica. The two center backs for Guatemala were both Samayoas. Um, I don't know if they're related, but yeah. Nicolas Samayoya, uh, he plays for a Romanian team, CSM. I'm going to try to pronounce this. Politecnica Yasi. Okay. And uh, he he plays decent amount. He doesn't play that many games, but uh, still, he's better than like any other option from Guatemala that I could think of in that position. So yeah, my right, my two center backs, Carlos Arcus and Nicolas Samayoya. Okay, it's nice to see some representation from some different countries that we haven't named yet. Jeff, who are your two center backs? Uh, my two center backs, they're actually like very random. Um, they don't normally play center back, but with the limited options I have, I can't really, uh, you know, think of any others. Um, it's a player that you guys um, said before, I'm going with my selecta, um, Alex Roldan, like a player that you named. I mean, I was debating. There was debating between him or Eric Savaleta to play at the at the center back position. But given that Alex has is a lot is the better Roldan, like Shrey said, you know he's a lot more useful than Christian. And especially when it comes to versatility, he can he can really be reliable, um, uh, a leader. Um, for me, he's a very inspirational in the locker room, encourages the players, and he just gives a lot of passion. And I pre- I'm pretty sure he can do a decent job at the at the center back position. And the other center back I'm choosing, it's uh, he's not really a center back like I just dis- like I disclaimed before. Um, uh, is Hackshaw from from Trinidad and Tobago? He's normally a midfielder for um, Oakland, but yeah, I'm just playing there in the center back position because I can't think of any other defenders. But yeah, those are my two center backs. Yeah, Hackshaw, another one like Edson Alvarez, who I said a CDM who can also play center back. So those are good picks, Jeff. Shrey, what about you? Yeah, just have to give a disclaimer to the viewers. This is definitely the worst part of my lineup. But um, honestly, they're not half bad. They're not half bad players. So my first center back is from Suriname, Stefano Denswell. He was he's not really from Suriname per se. His parents are both Surinamese, and he grew up in the Netherlands his entire life. And because of that, he's allowed to play for Suriname. So currently, he plays for Trabzonspor in Turkey. And look, he's a consistent starter. He's played for Ajax. He's played for Bologna in Syria. He's played for Club Bruges. He's not exactly an excellent player, but he's not half bad. So he's my first center back. And my second center back is Sheldon Batu from Trinidad and Tobago. He currently plays for Belgian team Beveren on loan from a Turkish, another Turkish team, Samyam Spor. And um, look, he's again not an amazing player by any means, but I had to get a player in. I had to get a player in from Trinidad and Tobago. He's not half bad. He, he I mean, he's a starter for. He's a starter for Beveren in Belgium. So um, yeah, he's my second starter back. Okay, wow, a lot of diversity in our picks. I don't know if we had a single player that was repeated there. Uh, but yeah, now into a position where I don't know if there will be that much diversity. For left back, I'm going to go for Alfonso Davies from Canada. I mean, look, in my opinion, he's the best player in CONCACAF. You can't make a team like this without him. If 
by far and away Canada's best player and considering the other left back options that CONCACAF has I mean he's the obvious choice for me Arjun do you agree yeah yeah I got Davies but there's no shot this dude's the best player in CONCACAF okay I, I don't care if I'm biased but like in my opinion I watch Dave I watch Bayern like he's he's a pace merchant like I mean Davies he, he has quality he's a good dribbler but he's a bit of a pace merchant, okay? And once teams know how to lock him down and contain his um, ability to sprint behind defenses at pace, he's basically pretty ineffective against um, opposition who can do that. But yeah, Alfonso Davies in my, is my last bet. Um, he is a pace merchant, though. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, do you agree with us? Um, Sort of, but um, I'm going a bit... Uh, I'm, well, yeah, but for my left back, um, I'm going with... Um, uh, you guys might not agree with me, but I'm going with uh, Canada's uh, second best left back, uh, Schaffelberg. From <laughs> I'm kidding, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. All right, I'm coming down. All right, I'm going with uh, obviously Alfonso Davies. Even, even um, a blind man that that has never seen or or, or heard, um never seen him play can would pick him as well. Uh, his uh his career speak for himself. I do agree with Arjun though. He's a bit of a pace merchant. As much as others want to complain and say that he's not. He's a bit inconsistent when it when it comes to defending, but uh, like um like we just said, uh, his pace uh, pretty much covers up covers him up whenever he makes a mistake. But I feel like now nowadays like he's not as effective as he was before because teams are starting to figure out more how to contain him, as we saw with Joe Scally and um and uh, um and uh, uh, Rob Aronson. Uh, Aronson. Yeah, they they were managed to contain him, and also you can even say. Um, way up as well when he started to drop back a bit we saw that he was able to um sort of keep up with davies although not everyone is as pacey as he is they're just starting to figure out more of um, how to contain him but yeah he's my he's my left back no brainer no doubt yeah that's definitely a good example of the nation's league final i, I did think that we did a pretty good job containing davies but shrey do you agree with us yeah i mean i really don't have anything that it has to be alfonso davies all right, now going into our three center mids, we're going to do them all at once. And I'm going to start with a bit of an under the radar one that I'm not sure if you guys would have on your list. Uh, I'm going to go for Shandon Baptiste, uh, my second Brentford player, plays for Granada internationally. He's got three caps, one goal for them. Bit of an under the radar player because I don't think he, he has played too much for Granada, only three caps, like I said. But he's a very good player, a rotational player for Brentford in the Premier League. And he's pretty solid whenever he's called upon and just considering the other options, especially from Granada, I think he was the obvious choice, at least if you were going to put a player from them in there. Uh, my second center mid is going to be Coco Carasquilla from Panama. I mean, we saw at the Gold Cup, this guy's an absolute baller. In my opinion, the player of the tournament, even though they did go on and lose the final to Mexico, unfortunately. And he's been balling in League Cup and MLS with the Dynamo as well. And it's been linked, uh, he's been linked to Europe as well. Uh, some moves to Spain, I've heard Real Valladolid as a potential option. So it's nice to see that his performances are not going unnoticed. And then for my third center mid, I'm going to go for a player from Curaçao. It's going to be Janinho Bracuña. The Netherlands international, like most of Curaçao's team, I mean, he's been playing in the championship for a long time. Huddersfield and now with Birmingham, he had a stint with the Rangers as well, one of the best teams in Scotland. And yeah, I think he's just a very consistent, reliable championship level center mid. And he beats another one of the options I was considering. Uh, from St. Kitts and Nevis, who's a little bit uh, lower level. So that's why I went for him. And I think he's definitely Curacao's best player far and away. Ar Arjun, who are your three center mids? Yeah, so two of mine are uh, big name players. Um, and one of mine is the same as Braden's. So uh, first I got, I'm playing a, I'm playing a CDM, a, a box to box, and then a uh, playmaker at 10. So for my CDM, I got Edson Alvarez. Um, uh, Mex the Mexican pick, I think, is pretty self-explanatory. Um, the best Mexican player um, they have right now, I mean, in my opinion, is him. And yeah, he slots in perfectly in that six role. And then um, for my eight, my box to box, Brayden said, I got Juninho Bacuna, the um, Birmingham midfielder. He's been balling out in England for for time now, for uh, several years. And he's a pretty underrated player. I watched him last year um, when Trusty was on Birmingham. And uh, he, he's, a, he's, a really, he's a really solid player, really technically gifted. And um, my 10 position, Christian Pulisic, um, the new 10 for AC Milan, not, not number-wise, but like position-wise for AC Milan, Christian Pulisic, the best American player, the best player we have as a, as a nation right now. And I think he put, um, fits in perfectly in that 10 role. 
and uh, leaves my forwards up for some pretty um, under radar nations to make an appearance for my three forward slots. So yeah, those are my three midfielders. Well, that's a really strong midfield, honestly. Potentially one of the best we could make. Uh, Jeff, are you, how are you going to follow that up? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go a bit different uh, to what you guys are saying. I mean, most of our midfield is probably different. Um, I'm gonna start it with um, Haiti's most well-known player. You might, guys, you guys might not agree with this. He's a Virginia native. Just a disclaimer. Uh, it's uh, Derek Entian Jr. He's had a pretty dumb, decent um, career uh, as an MLS player. Started off with the uh, Columbus Crew, if I'm not mistaken. Currently playing at Atlanta United. Um, he's represented Haiti Haiti throughout his entire career. Um, and also, he's a he's a fairly technical player. Um, he can play as a cam, so I'm having play him as a midfield. I'm pretty sure he can adapt pretty well there. And um, yeah, uh, and moving on to my other center midfielder, um, the most deserved player of the tournament, uh, Carrasquilla, a very very underrated um, um, player in Concacaf in general. If um, if I'm gonna be honest, um, and even at 24 years of age, uh, playing really well in the League's Cup with uh, Houston Dynamo. And attracting interest to Europe, like you said uh, earlier, Braden, uh, Real Valladolid, he was ranked by Real Valladolid as well. And um, whenever, whichever those two teams he goes, I'm pretty sure he can um, establish himself as a, as a um, crucial player. And finally, for um, for the camp position, I'm going with uh, Swayers from Grenada, right? Um, no, St. Kitts and Nevis. St. Kitts and Nevis, uh, Swayers uh, from Carter City. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, wow. So, so definitely some different picks to us there, Jeff. Uh, Shrey, who are your three midfielders? Yep. Honestly, mine's pretty similar to Arjun. So my six is Edson Alvarez. Mexicans would say he's the best six in CONCACAF. He's the second best, sorry. But he, in all jokes, in all seriousness, he is a really good player. He was linked to Dortmund. It didn't work out, but he finally gets his move to West Ham. So let's see how he does. So he's my clear six. Now my eight is the same as Arjun's Bakunia, who plays for Birmingham City. Honestly, really solid player, really solid player. And um, yeah, he fits in perfectly. He's been doing good things at Birmingham. I think he, he, he'll get a move eventually, so yeah. And he's probably Corsau's best player, to be honest. Uh, and yeah, so he's my eight. And my ten is Karskia. You, you guys already mentioned him. R really solid player. I mean, Panama's best player, arguably the best player in the Gold Cup. Honestly, I'd say he's the best player in the Gold Cup, even though Panama lost it. And yeah, he's he's been doing really good for Houston. Hopefully, gets out of Houston. He really deserves getting up, leaving Houston after that loss to Charlotte FC. I mean, come on, he just lost to Charlotte. How'd that happen? But um, yeah, the two teams in Spain, Valcano or Valdelid, whichever one, whichever one of those teams get him, will be lucky. So yeah, that's my midfield. Okay, nice to see some love for Karaskia and Bakuna uh, with three picks each. Now we're going to move on to the forwards, uh, starting with the right winger. And I'm going to go for Albert Elis from Honduras. This was a last minute change for me. I was really debating between him and a player from Guatemala. But yeah, I think Elis' uh, career speaks for itself. He's playing in Bordeaux currently in Ligue 2 in France. Uh, but yeah, an MLS legend with the Dynamo. I think he was really good when he was here. And yeah, I think for me, he's definitely Honduras' best player. And yeah, okay, a CONCACAF cult hero. So Arjun, who's your right winger? Uh, right winger for me, Geraldo Becker, the Union Be uh, the Union Berlin um, baller. He's been, he last season, he was an absolutely clinical forward for Union Berlin, scoring goals, getting assists. He, he's he's very fast. He's very fast, very physical. But he's he's got a really good technical ability too. He can dribble a ball amongst the best of them. And um, he's got that. I I watched him um, when Suriname played uh, Mexico. I think it was in the Nations League qualifiers. And um, Geraldo Becker impressed in that game. I think Mexico might have won that game by like one or two goals. It was a close game though. When Geraldo Becker was do I was running that midfield, he was dropping deep, picking up the ball, getting getting him behind defenses, doing all that. I think Geraldo Becker is a very underrated Concacaf player. I mean, par partially because Suriname isn't really seen as a Concacaf nation because it is in South America. But yeah, Geraldo Becker, shout out to you, man. You're a baller. You're never gonna watch this video, but still. Yeah, that's a, a great pick, Arjun. Uh, Jeff, who's your right winger? Um, I, follow, I apologize to my fellow Catracho hermanos. I couldn't pick any Hondurans, but I'm picking my first Jamaican, or only Jamaican, Leon Bailey. Um, 
like um you know there's other options like um you know um Michael Antonio you either Ethan Pinnock as well but I went for Bailey just because I feel like he he's like you know one of the only good um right winger options in my opinion better than Albert Edlis um to be to be fair once again I apologize if any Hondurans are watching this video but yeah Leon Bailey um he's been a player that's that that um that first that first took um uh sighting when when he moved to Bundesliga to the Bundesliga obviously with Bayer Leverkusen, um established himself as one of the best young players at the time, in um the Bundesliga um he had his fair share of contribution at uh, Bayer Leverkusen, then he left to Aston Villa, not as consistent as he was at Leverkusen, but you know still um managed to make himself um known and especially with Jamaica as well, uh. At the time, being their best player until Michael Antonio came in, and yeah, his his quality is um is something that that doesn't that doesn't get mentioned nowadays just because Jamaicans like to criticize him for being inconsistent. But yeah, uh, Leon Bailey is my player that I'm choosing for the right wing. All right, that's a good pick, Jeff. I think he's potentially the best right winger in Concacaf. Uh, Shrey, who's your right one? That's you. Yeah, so my right winger is a pretty unknown player. It's Nathaniel Mendez Lang, the 31-year-old Guatemalan. Raised in England his entire life as Jamaican father, Guatemalan mother, hence he played for Guatemala. And he's a bit of a journeyman. He's played for over 11 clubs and he's currently now at Derby County in the third division of England. He honestly didn't have that bad of he honestly had a pretty good not pretty good. He had a decent season last year in League One. Had some goals, had eight assists, not the best numbers c considering the, the level of play, but he's not that bad of a player. And look, Concaf is a pretty weak division, so I had to put him in there somewhere. All right. Yeah, that's a good pick at right wing. I was debating between him and Elis myself. Uh, now moving on to striker, and I'm actually going to go for a player that Arjun mentioned already. I'm going to go for Sherado Becker. Uh, decided to play him at the position that I think he's more suited for. I think he plays there for Union Berlin. Uh, yeah, I mean, Arjun basically said everything about him. Great striker in the start of the Bundesliga season before the World Cup. I mean, he had Union Berlin top of the league, which is completely unheard of for a club that small. And yeah, I mean, he's one of the best players in Bundesliga and I think definitely one of the best strikers in CONCACAF. A little under the radar because, like Arjun said, Suriname's in South America but does play in CONCACAF just due to their size and overall strength as a team. But I'm going to go for Becker. Who are you going with, Arjun? Uh, bit of a basic pick. Uh, I got Mikhail Antonio, the Jamaican power forward. Um, basketball terminology, but he is a forward and he is very powerful. And um, yeah, Premier League cult hero for West Ham and nothing much to say more about him. And also quick, a fun fact about Mendez Lang, by the way, um, he now goes by Nathaniel Mendez and he, uh, for Guatemala. Only his mother's, only his mother's um, Hispanic name, um, not his uh, father's name, even though he's Mendez Lang for Guatemala, he goes by Mendez. So yeah, fun fact there. All right, that's interesting. I didn't know that for sure. Uh, Jeff, who's your striker? I'm going with um, um, the Argentinian white boy, no Mexican at all, uh, Santiago Jimenez. Uh, in my opinion, just because I don't, just because I, I don't like Edson that much, uh, he's Mexico's best player. Um, he had a pretty pretty um, big breakout European first um, season with uh, Feyenoord. Uh, he quickly established himself as as uh you know uh, one of the top strikers um, to look out for in the netherlands uh obviously we can't forget that bracy scored against lazio um um that's what really um you know got him going with uh you know within europe and in my opinion um he's and he's um the um one of if not mexico's um you know um most clutched up players i mean we obviously saw in the gold cup final um you know, came in as a, a, a big super sub, scoring that goal, um, you know, to seal Mexico's, uh, you know, luck of a win in the in the Gold Cup. Uh, and, uh, yeah, and, you, you know, this guy, um, he's, he's, his style of play is really good. Um, Jimenez is a bit of a, of a mobile striker. Um, he's not the most technical, but he is good at combining. He's good at um, getting, running in behind the defenders. And, you know, and, and, and in some ways, he has the traits of a poacher. 
you know, he's a very um, good young player. He's not the best striker in CONCACAF, um, in my opinion. He's definitely top four, in my opinion. But yeah, um, but the Mexicans still want to claim him as, as being one of their own when he's just as white as Braden is. All right, that's a good pick. Uh, three different players so far. Shrey, are you going to go for a fourth different one or agree with one of us? I'm going to have to agree with Arjun here. It has to be Mikel Antonio for me. I had to get Jamaican in here. And who else but Mikel Antonio? West Ham legend, over, played over eight seasons in the Prem for them, over 60 goals. He obviously didn't have that great of a season last year, but he's still a quality player. And yeah, he's still a quality player. He's a West Ham legend. And yeah, I have nothing else to add. All right, now moving on to the last section, the last position, uh, the left wing. And Arjun was saying Alfonso Davies isn't the best player in CONCACAF. Well, I can definitely say I've got the two best players in CONCACAF on my team now because I'm going with Christian Pulisic, obviously Captain America, as my left wing. No matter the order, I think it's pretty fair to say that Davies and Pulisic are the best two players in CONCACAF. So I had to get them both in here. And considering the other left wing options, I mean, there's a couple strikers that can play here, like one from Trinidad and Tobago specifically caught my eye, but I mean, it has to be Pulisic for me. It's a no brainer. USA's best player, potentially the best player in CONCACAF as well. So Arjun, who's your left wing? Um, Quick disclaimer, when I was making this team, I thought I had a Panamanian in there because a Panamanian deserves to be in this team, but I just completely forgot. So yeah, uh, apologize to any Panamanians out there who are watching this. Um, I forgot you guys. So yeah, RIP. But my left winger, um, the Trinidad and Tobago, um, Samba boy. Kind of, he plays kind of like one. He plays like a Brazilian, but Levi Garcia. He's uh, insanely fast, insanely technically gifted. He's a perfect winger. Um, he was absolutely cooking Miazga in the Gold Cup, and I loved, I, I loved to see, I loved every moment of it. I love seeing Miazga get cooked. I mean, as, as a Columbus fan, it's off topic, but I love seeing Miazga get cooked. Also, he's a big mouth. And I don't like that. I don't like Miazga's big mouth. But yeah, Levi Garcia class for eight AEK Athens, Athens in Greece. He's been playing for them, and he um put in some really good shifts last year. And uh, AEK fans really like him, and he's been one of their better players. And obviously in the Gold Cup against the USA, he was cooking us. Um, the only trade that player who was actually giving us real dangerous um, threats on goal. And yeah, Levi Garcia has earned the place in my CogCath exile. Yeah, that's the player I was alluding to when I said the Trinidad striker. I, I wish I could have fit him into this team. But yeah, great player. Like you said, ran circles around the USA in the Gold Cup. Jeff, who's your left wing? Left winger, I have... Obviously, our our boy, the man, the goat of, of our national team, Christian Pulisic. Obviously, man, um, yeah, yeah, no doubt, he's definitely um up there with Davies as one of the best players in Concacaf. You know, Lozano's no longer in the picture. Move him out of the way. Now it's just Pulisic and Davies vying for who's the better player. But we can say that both of them right now it's tied in my opinion. But as a Pulisic fanboy, I'll, I'll, I'll def I have him a little bit higher um, instead of Davies. Respect to Davies, though, he's a quality player. Both of them are quality players. But yeah, Pulisic's career speaks for itself and what he's done in CONCACAF and what he's done with the national team. But yeah, that wraps up for my 11. It's perfect. Yeah, good pick, as always. Shrey, who you got? Yeah, my left wing has to be the LeBron James of Calcio, right? He's going to go off for AC Milan. And he's going to show why he's the best player in CONCACAF this season. He's going to go off. He's going to go off, and Davies is going to be nowhere to sing. You know what? Because Dortmund's going to win the league. No, nah, they're not. But Pulisic, he's going to go off this season. Captain America, one of our best players ever. Probably will go down as our best player ever, to be honest. So, yeah, that's the end of my lineup. All right, some great picks, not only at left wing, but throughout the whole lineup. I think this was a really cool video to make, guys. I mean, lots of diversity, as we saw, with having to pick one player per nation. We saw a lot of different nations get uh, chosen, I think definitely more than 11. There were some nations that weren't chosen by everyone. Definitely a lot of players that weren't chosen by everyone. So I think it's a very cool concept. Guys, let us know in the comments if you want to see us do this for other federations. I think we could definitely make some cool teams for Combat Bowl, UEFA, maybe Asia as well, Africa. But yeah, thank you, Arjun. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Shrey, for joining me for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Like and subscribe if you did. Comment down below. Tell us your CONCACAF team. It's 
I think it's a pretty interesting uh, debate. A lot of different ways you could go. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next video.